seasonal basis, the seasonal period uh, for which Bath is popular in the 18th century was largely through November to May. Uh, January, February, March were the peak, most popular, most expensive uh, months in uh, Bath. So this is Queen Square, it's the work of John Wood, and it was uh, designed to provide lots of lodgings for people arriving and wanting somewhere to stay. Um, today it's mainly a commercial square, not much in the way of private lodgings around, apart from the hotel on the south side, the Francis Hotel. It's also the nearest stop that we have for the Jane Austen Centre. So were you uh, wanting to visit the Jane Austen Centre, this would be the nearest place that the bus will take you. And if you look into the centre of the square on your right there, you'll notice the obelisk. Not as large as it once was actually, it was much larger. It was, I think the top of it was destroyed in a thunderstorm, so they sort of bevelled it level again, but it's much more than it originally was. It uh, dedicates, it's deca dedicated to the Prince of Wales. Not our present one, of course, but the one who was Prince of Wales in the 1830, 18th century. He was Prince Frederick. Prince Frederick was the eldest son of George II and his wife Caroline, Queen Caroline, the Queen of Queen's Square. And on the left, the northern side of the square, where you have this wonderful uh, architecture, this stylish architecture. On the right then is the Jane Austen Centre. And if you're fans of Jane Austen, that's not a bad place to visit. Um, they'll tell you a bit about her, they'll answer your questions, and you can find a bit more about this young lady and her life and times here in Bath. She lived here for six years, in fact, at Jane Austen together, although she'd been here many times before that, and they knew the city rather well. In fact, Bath is mentioned in most of Jane Austen's books. Two of them, in fact, were actually set here. First one, uh, North Hammer Abbey, the second was Persuasion. They were actually written some 14 years apart, reflecting then uh, quite significant differences which took place in the city uh, during that period. Now we're going to turn to the left now, but if you look straight ahead of you, you've got a rather lovely residential street up there. It's called the Paragon, a lovely curved street. All that's best in Bath residential architecture. And you'll see more of it straight ahead of you here left and right, this is all the expansion of Bath of the 18th century resulting in some of these wonderful buildings, classic buildings with these rather wide high pavements which you can see on the right here keeping the ladies' dresses away from the mud of the streets below them and coming up on the left the assembly room, is that the building, the next the building on your left well, you can see the uh, chandeliers through the first floor windows if you're very quick. These are the new assembly rooms, uh, not to be confused with the old assembly rooms which were demolished in 1908. These were built in 1770, these assembly rooms here on the left. Uh, they were pretty much destroyed, in fact, uh, during the last war. They were beautifully restored for us. And the chandelier that you might have got a glimpse of 